My name is Dr. Beverly McMillan. I'm a board-certified obstetrician-gynecologist with 45 years of experience, and I've completed around 500 abortions. Today, I'm going to explain a first trimester suction DNC abortion, also called vacuum aspiration abortion. This is typically used up to 14 weeks of pregnancy. When the woman goes to the facility for the abortion, she will lie on a table with her feet in stirrups, and she will be administered local anesthesia. The abortionist will place a speculum, like this, inside the vagina and open it, allowing the abortionist to see the cervix, the entrance to the uterus. The cervix is grasped with a long metal instrument to stabilize it. A series of metal rods called dilators, like these, which increase in thickness, are inserted into the cervix to dilate it, gaining access to the inside of the uterus where the fetus resides. The abortionist then inserts into the uterus a hollow plastic tube with a hole in it called a cannula and attaches it to suction. If the embryo is small enough, the cannula can be attached to a syringe and manual suction alone will remove the embryo and placenta from the uterus. Otherwise, the cannula will be attached to a suction machine. The suction machine is turned on and the abortionist slowly rotates the cannula inside the uterus. The fetus is rapidly torn to pieces as it is pulled through the cannula and tubing into a large glass bottle, followed by the placenta. Sometimes smaller embryos are pulled through intact. Occasionally, the abortionist must remove the cannula and pull out body parts that have clogged the opening to complete the abortion. Once the abortionist thinks everything has been removed, she will sometimes use a long metal curette to scrape the lining of the uterus to make sure no parts are left behind. An incomplete abortion can cause infection or bleeding. Once the uterus is empty and the bleeding is under control and all the instruments are removed, the abortion is considered complete. But before the patient leaves, the tissue must be examined to make sure the placenta and all the body parts are accounted for. Two arms, two legs, a spine, a skull, the risks of suction abortion include perforation or laceration of the uterus or cervix, potentially damaging intestine, bladder, and nearby blood vessels. Other risks include hemorrhage, infection, and in rare instances, even death. Future pregnancies are also at a greater risk for loss or premature delivery due to abortion-related trauma and injury to the cervix. As I said at the beginning, I used to do abortion, in fact, I helped to open the first abortion clinic in the state of Mississippi in 1975. At that time, I thought abortion was what women needed, and I was totally oblivious to the life of the child. But one day, I looked at the remains of a 12-week-old baby boy that I had just aborted, and I thought to myself, what is the difference between this little boy and my own four-year-old son? I came to recognize that abortion doesn't just end a pregnancy, it kills an innocent human being. Now, I am a pro-life advocate. I am proof that anyone can change, no matter who they are or what they have done. I invite you to join me and make a decision to protect the preborn.